Having a great appointment with a potential major donor is easier than you might think. Sure, it can be intimidating, but I'm going to reveal some secrets that will help you not only make a presentation with confidence, but in all likelihood, get your project fully funded. Stay tuned. In the mid-2000s, I and an organizational leader went to visit a very successful medium-sized business owner in Jacksonville, Florida. We were very optimistic about the appointment because the man indicated some interest in our efforts in Washington, D.C. It took a while to get the appointment, and when we arrived, we were ushered through a series of long hallways to a meeting room. After a few minutes of waiting, the business owner came in and sat down. As I normally do, I ask questions about his understanding of our organization. He seemed to be familiar, but when I probed him, he started to compare us to another nonprofit in town. He started out slow and began gushing about the other nonprofit for what seemed to be an eternity. I quickly felt that it was going to be impossible to get his attention off the other organization and onto ours. I eventually did get to present the need, but after doing so, he broke the news that was no, no surprise to me, that all his giving was to this other organization. He stated, I appreciate your work, but it's just not a priority for me. I learned a valuable lesson that day. I should have done my homework a little better before flying all the way to Jacksonville to meet with someone who is clearly not interested in giving to us. There are lessons that can be learned from every appointment and some are easy and others are difficult. This one was difficult, but it was a valuable lesson to learn. Today, we're going to talk about the keys to successful appointments and the lessons I've learned over my career in fundraising and development. Here's the first lesson to getting fully funded on an appointment with a major donor. Lesson number one, do your homework. Find out all you can about the person you're about to meet. Does he or she own their own business? What kind of business is it? What is their estimated net worth? What do you know about their assets? What's the value of their primary residence? Any other property? Do they support other nonprofits? What's their level of interest? That would have helped me before meeting with our business owner in Jacksonville. If the name of the potential donor was given to you by a board member or friend of your organization, see if that person can add to what you need to know about them. A friend or colleague always seems to know the capacity of the person to give a gift. People associate with individuals of their same socioeconomic status. Create any brochures, flyers, or leaving pieces that you think will help your case and make you feel more confident. In a minute, I'm going to talk about needing information that presents your output and stories that present your outcomes, so hang with me. If you're going to present a formal proposal, use this template. Address the problem. Present the solution the activities of your organization, and three, present the opportunity to give. Even if you decide to present this verbally, it helps to have an outline. Lesson number two, the opening. Start off with an appropriate greeting and jump right into open-ended questions. This is your opportunity to fine-tune your presentation on the fly by understanding more about the person, their understanding of the problem, burden for your mission, and interest in your cause. Find out what they know about the problem that caused your organization to be created in the first place. Ask questions like, what's your perspective on the state of our world today, or college students, or homelessness, or the environment? Then find out how much they know about your organization. Ask, how did you first hear about our organization? What are your thoughts about our mission to solve the problem addressed just a minute ago? You'll learn a lot about their understanding of the organization, programs, and projects you hope funding by just asking a few questions. 
Their understanding will let you know where to jump in on your presentation. Always be thinking, how can I use these answers to clarify their understanding or to tap into their burden when I make the appeal? Do they have a need or desire that needs to be met that your funding proposal might help? Lesson number three, main presentation. Find a way to transition from the opening to the main presentation or the body of your conversation. Well, Mr. Jones or Mrs. Jones, the reason I'm here today is that I'm talking with individuals like you who have a heart for our cause. If you got their name from a referral, mention Scott Peterson thought you might be interested in hearing about our work with XYZ audience. If you have the time and it's appropriate, include the history of the organization and any story that got you to the organization. For example, my wife and I were greatly impacted in college by the nonprofit we've worked at for the past 38 years. That kind of endorsement is irreplaceable. Then address the problem. Nearly every nonprofit was started to solve a problem in society or in the life of a certain group of people. Share that with the potential or current donor and connect how they viewed the problem in the opening. Share your mission, but also share what you're doing to solve the problem. Strategies, programs, or projects that you employ. Whether you have a formal written proposal or an informal verbal presentation, go through that with the potential donor. Use a brochure, proposal, or case for support, or perhaps even a video or pictures if you feel that will help. Be sure to share that, what you hope to see funded and why. Make sure your presentation addresses the logical giver as well as the emotional giver. The logical giver will be motivated by the output, facts, figures, and statistics. The emotional giver will be motivated by the outcomes, stories of an individual whose life was changed by the efforts or of what you did. If you can show pictures of the person using their first name and perhaps even written or video stories, that will make a major impact. Before I get to the most important part, the appeal, if you've liked what you heard in this video so far, hit the like button and consider sharing this video with a colleague or friend. And please subscribe to this channel and join our community of nonprofit leaders changing lives through their efforts. Lesson number four, the appeal. At this point, after giving them the outputs and outcomes, present the opportunity that exists for them to make a real difference through their giving. Remember, it's been said that every organization has needs, but few have exciting opportunities. Find those exciting opportunities in which to invest. You'll want to share ways for them to make a difference through a generous gift and be as specific as possible about the gift and, and the size, including how it will be used and the impact. If you've done your homework, you should know what's an appropriate gift size to ask. Start with the total package in cost and see if they're willing to give a gift to help cover a portion or all of the cost of the program. If this would be their first gift to your organization, it's always best to have a project or program big enough that they aren't expected to cover all the costs or most of the costs of the project. That's too much of an obligation for a first-time gift. If you don't know their capacity or have a proposed gift amount, ask, how much of the total cost do you see yourself being able to cover? There usually are three responses, yes, no, and maybe. If the person says yes, express appreciation and ask for details about the gift, such as when can I expect to get the gift? How will that gift flow? Single gift, monthly, quarterly, or annually? Will that come in the form of a check, credit card, or bank transfer? I know you're excited to get back to your office and share what happened, but don't forget to ask for referrals. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, is there anyone else you know who would be as interested as you to hear about this exciting opportunity? 
a maybe gift means that they need a little more time to process and think about it. And that's not a bad thing, as it isn't a no. It might also mean that they want to give an amount that's larger and doesn't warrant a quick response. They need some research time. Find out when you can call them to get an answer. Never, never leave this open-ended or in their court. Say something like, I know you'd like to call me, but I'm hard to reach. Can I call you on Thursday at 10 a.m.? Or is there a better time to call? A no response might not be bad. A no might mean not now. If so, find out what would be a good time to check back. Six months? A year? But it might mean they simply aren't interested at all. For all no responses, express appreciation for their time and consideration. If appropriate, ask for referrals even if they said no. It might give them a win by feeling like they at least helped you in some way. But remember, this is not about you, it's about your efforts. I hope this process made the presentation a little less painful and that you have confidence that you can do this. Just step out there, listen, learn, and propose opportunities and wait for a response. It's that easy. Getting that gift is simpler than it sounds. As I said earlier, the objective of this channel is to help you get fully funded this year. And if you found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wish to watch future videos on this channel, be sure to subscribe. If you want to know other helpful tips related to major donor appointments, watch this video. As always, I wish you the best as you strive to reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.